I am here with Ambassador Susan Kobich, who oversees the department which looks at human trafficking, and they did hand down the report just a short time ago. China, of course, as you mentioned, uh, the key finding amongst the worst offenders for human trafficking now, a massive downgrade. Just explain why, after being on this watch list, watch list for several years, why were they downgraded? So any country that moves down to Tier 3 is not engaging in significant efforts to combat human trafficking. And there are a variety of reasons that countries um, can do that, and China certainly this year was not increasing its efforts to combat trafficking. Now, Secretary Tillerson did announce a new initiative to tackle human trafficking. Explain what that is and where the funding will come from. So the U.S. Congress uh, created a, a set aside $25 million for what the State Department is calling the Program to End Modern Slavery. And the idea is to create a global fund similar to the fund that combated AIDS and to have other countries and other um, donors, citizens, individuals, businesses contribute to this global fund to fight modern slavery. Modern slavery is a worldwide phenomenon and we can't tackle it with just U.S. dollars. We need dollars and commitment from other countries, other businesses and other organizations. Now President Trump has spoken pretty tough on ending human trafficking, saying this is a key priority for the Trump administration. Administration. But we do know from the budget papers that there could be a 30% cut to the State Department. That doesn't seem to add up. How will the State Department operate to tackle this issue with a cut of that amount? Well, the State Department budget is not finalized yet, and we don't know how it affects various departments. My office is very committed to continuing with whatever resources we have to fight modern slavery. There are always concerns about the integrity of a report when it's linked to the U.S. government, you're ranking other other countries, and whether there could be a conflict of interest. We saw in 2015 that Cuba was upgraded the same year that the U.S. Embassy opened in, in Havana. How do you ensure the integrity of the report? So the report is created under U.S. law, and U.S. law clearly sets out four minimum standards that we are to evaluate. Twelve indicia come under that fourth standard, and those minimum standards standards look at things like, is the law sufficient? Are punishments sufficient when someone is convicted? We look at the number of convictions in a country. We look at the number of victims identified and what services they are provided. So there are really some concrete and specific things we are looking at. We're very grateful to foreign governments for sharing that information with us. In addition to getting statistical information from governments, we engage with non-governmental organizations. We read media coverage. We look at all the different reports on what is going on in a country. And we assess those countries' efforts under these minimum standards. It's a very analytical process, and there is no room for political considerations. Now, looking at China, um, just to give us a sense of whether China was aware that it was going to be downgraded before this report was handed down, and, and if so, what reaction they had. So as a courtesy to all foreign governments, our embassies in those countries alert the governments the day before that the TIP report is coming out and what the country's ranking will be. And many countries value a good ranking and, and look for a good ranking so they can demonstrate to the world and to their own citizens that they are serious about combating trafficking. Some nations then are frustrated when they are downgraded but if you look at the narrative for each country there are recommendations as to what each country can do to improve its track record with respect to human trafficking. Ambassador Susan Kovic, great to have you with us. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you.